dear students i welcome you for the today's lecture related to the heat exchanger designing now heat exchanger designing is uh, very much important from the perspective of chemical engineer as well as from the mechanical engineering however when the campus interviews are there the designing of a heat exchanger is a very common question and this lecture will help you for answering the specific questions in your interview now basically the heat exchanger is designing there are two methods one is to select a heat exchanger that will achieve a specific temperature change in a fluid of known mass flow rate that means we are having a known mass flow rate and the temperature differences are provided for us or with the mass flow rate we are going to calculate the temperature differences and then designing the heat exchanger according to the given duty according to the given load so this is the step wise exchanger designing procedure and second is the predict the outlet temperature of hot and cold fluid stream in a specified heat exchanger that means you are having a heat exchanger and you are doing the calculations to calculate the outlet temperatures for hot and cold fluid this method is called the effectiveness method or ntu method number of transfer unit method so one by one we will see the exchanger designing first we will see the log mean temperature difference method this is the most common method where the step by step heat exchanger designing that is provided now for that purpose we are having the 11 step designing procedure that is first is to define the duty <coughs> defining duty that means how much amount of the heat that is to be exchanged this is the q how much amount of the heat that is to be exchanged is the q and this q is calculated by supplied amount of the mass flow rate for the hot fluid and for the cold fluid similarly we must be knowing the temperatures for the inlet temperature for the hot fluid outlet temperature for the hot fluid inlet temperature for the cold fluid and the outlet temperature for the cold fluid so this is the first step that means we should know the heat duty that is how much amount of the heat that is to be exchanged what is the mass flow rate for hot fluid and cold fluid what are the inlet and outlet temperatures for the hot and cold fluid the next is to calculate or to collect the different physical property that is the viscosity density specific heat thermal conductivity for the hot fluid for the cold fluid and the thermal conductivity of a metal the separating metal that is needed so this much physical properties they are needed and this physical properties they should be at a average temperature for a hot fluid what are the th and tho the average of that temperature i should collect this physical property the next is a type of a exchanger whether it's a shale and tube exchanger 
whether it's a plate type heat exchanger, whether it's a spiral type heat exchanger. So there are different types of heat exchanger. With a little modification, we can change his designing procedure. But the basic steps, they are same. Let's just assume the overall heat transfer coefficient u. So you have to assume this overall heat transfer coefficient based on the certain specific numerical values provided in the literature by the different author. That means a past experience of the different people will help us to assume this value. The next step is to calculate the mean temperature difference. The log mean temperature difference and a correction factor that is to be used to calculate the mean temperature difference. Next is calculate the area because in the first step we have calculated this Q then we are assuming this U and we are calculating this delta Tm. So this Q assumes U and calculated delta Tm, the area that will be calculated. So calculate the area required for the heat exchange. The next is the defining the exchanger layout. Exchanger layout that incorporates the number of tubes, the diameter of the tube, the length of a tube, then the velocity to the tube, then what is the pitch arrangement, whether it's a triangular pitch arrangement, square pitch arrangement or a rotated square pitch arrangement, then you have to calculate the number of passes, number of passes on the cube side or number of passes on the shell side. For that purpose, in case of a tube side passes, we are using the pass partition plate. In case of a shell side passes, we are using the longitudinal or transverse baffle. Then calculate the outside surface area, then the number of tubes, bundle diameter, the diameter of the shell, the baffle spacing, all that is inside the heat exchanger that is to be designed or defined in the seven point of exchanger layout. The next is calculate the individual heat transfer coefficient. For the calculation of the individual heat transfer coefficient, one has to calculate the cross-sectional area of the tube, then the number of passes, uh, number of tubes per pass, number of tubes per pass, that will be equal to the number of tubes upon the tube side passes. The next is the calculation of the cross-sectional, total cross-sectional area in one pass. Total cross-sectional area in one pass, which is equal to the cross-sectional area of the individual tube and the number of passes. Then UT, that is the velocity of the fluid which is passing through the tube, then the Reynolds number for the fluid, which is passing through the tube, the Prandtl number of the fluid, which is passing through the tube, and finally the individual heat transfer coefficient that can be calculated from the Cedar Tata equation or the other defined correlations. The next is the Shell side heat transfer coefficient XO. For that purpose also, one has to calculate the A 
area for the cell size, the heat transfer area for the cell size. That means the outside of the tube. Then the velocity of the fluid passing to the cell size. Then the equivalent diameter of the tube, equivalent diameter for the cell size, then Reynolds number for the fluid which is flowing to the shell side, triangle number of the fluid which is flowing to the shell side, and then finally the Hi, HO, that is the shell side heat transfer coefficient is to be calculated by using the defined correlations in terms of Reynolds number and triangle number. Then calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient by considering the individual coefficients, the fouling resistances, and the thermal resistance because of the metal wall. Then compare this calculated value of the overall heat transfer coefficient with the assumed value of the U in this case from the past experiences. So, after comparing, if the values they are more or less equal, then our designed values or defined values for the exchanger layout, they are good. Or else, I have to go back to the step 4, that is changing the calculated value of U0 in this value of assumed value of the U. Means U0 value, calculated value of U0 is to be substituted here and again calculate the area, again calculate or define the exchanger layout, calculate the individual heat transfer coefficient and then calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. So, it's the optimization process. First, we are doing, defining the U, then we are calculating the U, comparing this U and calculated U0. If they satisfy, the designing is okay, or else substitute the assumed value of U0 at the calculated value. Then next is to calculate the pressure drop. Pressure drop on the shell side as well as the pressure drop on the tube side that is to be calculated by using the simple uh, calculations which we, uh, you have done in the fluid mechanics calculations. A modification of that calculation suitable for the exchanger, heat exchanger. You have already calculated the pressure drop in the pipe. The same pressure drop calculations will be applicable for the tubes also. Then finally, to optimize the design, the in optimization of the designing, the lowest area that will give you the better cost, better investment, so this is step by step procedure for the exchanger layout. 